What's up, guys? Proplayer Apathy here, back with a Q&A video. I went to Twitter and asked you guys to ask me a whole bunch of questions. So I got the best ones. I'm going to do my best to answer them as fast as possible. But at the same time, a lot of these are really good questions, like I said. So I'm going to go in depth but in terms of like tips, things about me, and just giving you guys a lot of insight in the competitive world, in the pro world, and in my world. So we're going to start off with the first question from Paradox Noah. What are your top three CODs and why? Easy. Black Ops 2. Black Ops 3, COD 4, in no order. Now for the why part. Call of Duty 4 was my first COD ever, and in my opinion, it was one of the best CODs ever, bro. It was so fun to play. The gunplay, the maps, dude, multiplayer. Like, I grinded the hell of that game, bro. Like, I played that game so much. I, I was 10 prestige. I would pump stomp, and it was just always so rewarding. Like, it felt just amazing playing the game. Everything just felt so right. And no, I'm not talking about that COD 4, COD Remastered bullshit. Because, no, that is not Call of Duty 4. I'm talking about OG Call of Duty 4. Now, we got Black Ops 2. Obviously, the 10-pick system was um, really good in that game. And Black Ops 3 had it as well. Black Ops 2 was probably the best boost in the ground game. Uh, again, maps were great. Guns were great. It was really balanced. Uh, it just it had everything that you want in a Call of Duty and a boost Call of Duty as well. Black Ops 3, that's where they got a little crazy. You know, it, it, they put wall running in there. They, put, they added specialists in there because AW didn't really have specialists. They had like exo suits. So Black Ops 3 did get a little crazy, but it was still an amazing game. Again, good maps, good gun play, what like pretty balanced weapons. It was fun. It was a little bit more vibrant. It, you know, the wall running and specialist aspect kind of like it was fun, but then in the competitive side of things, it killed it maybe a little bit. Maybe a lot of people weren't like too fond of it. But overall, just another great game, man. Such a fun game. HSI Lethal asks, if you weren't a pro ga gamer, what would you be doing in life? Honestly, at this point in my life, I would probably say creating content, whether it's YouTube videos, you know, just being like a content creator, be a streamer. Um, if I didn't really know about gaming, probably, you know, something having to do with health, uh, physical, you know, maybe being a trainer for like uh, lifting, uh, physical therapist. Like I was going to be one of those at some point. Um, not a, I don't think I would be a doctor because that takes too long. I, I like school, but I don't like school that much, you know. But definitely something, I would like to do something that would help others. Now, this next question comes from Dog Rocker 12 He asks, how much money would you have to be paid to never play another video game again? Honestly, at this point in my life, I can say I do not want any sum of money. Now, obviously, it'd be nice to have a huge payday, a billion dollars, a trillion dollars. But gaming has honestly got me through some dark times. And it ha has helped me, like, in a way, escape reality, right? Like... It just takes you into this whole new world where you're able to like play, have fun, and this whole it's a whole different vibe, man. And it's honestly changed my life, and it's changed my life for the better. And I can confidently confidently say that, obviously, with like what it's helped me escape, and also with like playing and competing, and it's like my career. So definitely, I don't think you could pay me any amount of money now. If you would ask me this question maybe like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, then maybe I'll be like, yeah, you know, pay me some money. But bro, it's it's the future. It's the world, bro. Like, it's just, I, I don't think I can, I can accept anything. And maybe you guys would be like, oh, you're lying. You're lying. You know, that's not true. You would, you would take a billion dollars without. Honestly, man, it's just, it's part of me. It's part of my life. So I don't know if, I don't think I would. Amish Crab asked me, what team are you playing for next year? The team I'll be playing for next year is. Uh, YZ asked me, what certain characteristics are you looking for an ideal teammate? Now, there's a couple things that you try to look in a teammate. Obviously, you want someone who's passion, uh, passionate, dedicated. Uh, you want someone that's going to care, but also is going to grind the game, put in the time. I guess that goes hand in hand with caring. And is also going to be open minded, you know, not be too toxic, you know, actually try to get better and, and not try to be like detrimental to the team. So obviously, that's really hard to find sometimes in the amateur world. And people always ask me like, Dude, it's so hard finding someone who's on the same vibe as me. Dude, it's so hard, like, finding someone who wants to grind like me and, like, has the same attitude as me. Like, all I want to do is be better and, like, I'm willing to take criticism. And I get it. It is difficult, man, because to have all those things, like, I feel like you have to be somewhat mature and, like, understand and kind of be, like, mentally strong. And those things, like, take time to build and it comes with experience. So it is kind of hard to find those things sometimes. But those are, like, the two main things, bro. Having someone who cares, like, a, a, a teammate who's going to grind, like, just cares. I mean, that goes hand in hand with passionate you know, dedicated, you know, it's going to be like vocal and practice and like go hard and practice. And then having someone also not really being toxic or detrimental towards the team. That way the team can prosper and be at its highest and fullest potential. Caught his life asked me, how much longer do you believe you can continue to play at the top level? Honestly, it just depends on 
my position and kind of how I'm feeling. Like you guys saw Karma uh, retire this year. Uh, I think it was a mix of things. One, he was just burnt out. He was tired of it. You know, he's been competing for so long, bro. Guys, it's a grind. It's it's not like, oh, you know, you just play five. No, like you got to grind. You got to get on a certain time every single day almost of the entire season. Grind. And then on top of it, put in extra hours if you want to be better. You know, it's it's a grind. It's a lot of commitment. So, you know, people just, like, give up eventually. So it just really depends. Like, if I'm in a position like he was, like, we are obviously, like, one of the worst teams. And he was just kind of burnt out. So he just didn't want to deal with it anymore. So if I'm put in a similar position like that, then maybe I just say screw it. Or also, you know, it just depends where I'm at in life. Like, in a couple years, I'm like, all right, dude, like, I had my fun. It was It was fun, like, grinding and going dumb hard. And trying to be the best but it's time to take a step back and you know move on to the next thing in life so i guess it's just kind of where my head's at in a couple years tricardo asked me how's it like being a father while still trying to stay at a competitive cod pro level now it has been sort of a challenge for me um obviously i'm a father now i do have a five month and a half year old uh, little girl and she's been a little bit of a handful but she is a blessing you know she's part of my life forever now and I tried my best to, like, balance both. And obviously, like, you know, any free time I had, I kind of put it into her. And, like, sometimes I'll make a little sacrifices, maybe play a little less that day or wake up a little bit earlier or whatever it is to spend more time with her. And I just try to do my best, like, trying to be the best player I can and put in a ton of hours at the competitive pro level because, you know, that is my passion and I want to be the best and I, I, I want to be able to perform for me and my team while at the same time, you know, taking care of my daughter, helping her, you know, grow raising her and it's just like i have two jobs right now right i'm a parent i'm a father i gotta do what's best for her and at the same time i gotta worry about you know being a pro being the best you know being able to you know afford for food whatever put food on the table you know pay the bills because yeah, at the end of the day i also gotta worry about that and take care of my family so it's been a little bit difficult it's a challenge it's new to me but i'm working on it and i feel like i'm doing a pretty good job so I could do, I could be better. I can always do better. The Steiner asked me which team was the best, Team Envy in BO3 or EG in World War II. Now, if you guys don't know, I did win uh, the World Championship with both of these teams. Uh, I definitely would have to go with Envy, though. A great group of talented players. Don't get me wrong. The EG team was obviously talented as well. But I just felt like we were really consistent. We really had a good idea of the game. I felt like we were just on point. We just, like, had the game broken down perfectly. EG, we sort of like, we were pretty good, like, but towards the end, we really, you know, just took off. And that was with a lot of practice, a lot of work, but I definitely felt like Envy was a better team. Forbidden Zeus asked, hopefully it doesn't come soon, but what are your plans after retiring from comp? I love the streams, by the way. Let's go, go. Hey, Zeus, thank you for the love, man. If you guys don't know, I do stream at twitch.tv slash apathy pretty consistently at the moment during off season. Catch me. But honestly, when I retire, I don't want to be a caster or like an analyzer or a coach. And it's because I just don't want to travel anymore. I don't want to have such a huge responsibility like that. I want to enjoy like the my life a little bit more and be able to have like my own schedule and put into something else that I really love, you know, in terms of like making content. That's really my goal. I would like to be a full-time content creator. I think, you know, the next BR or whatever it is, become disgusting at it. I feel like I could be really good at whatever comes out, the next BR Call of Duty, whatever it is, and just put out content, stream all the time, put YouTube videos, and that way I don't have to travel or do any of that stuff. I get to spend time with the family. I get to be on my own schedule, and it's just a win-win for me, man. Just having that sort of like schedule that I would love to have to be kind of free when I want to be free, and then on top of it to do something I absolutely love and something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I think that's just that's what I would like to do. And hopefully we can execute that, you know, in a couple of years. Thatters asked, how long were you grinding the scene before becoming a pro player? Funny thing about this, I actually started playing Halo 3 first. And that was like kind of the game I was trying to go pro in. Uh, I went to a couple local tournaments around here in Florida. Uh, I didn't really do too well. I did like, okay, you know, in the middle. I tried to go to, uh, I think like an MOG event when I was like 15. And my parents were like, no, you can't go. Obviously, you know, it makes sense. I'm 15 years old and they, they didn't want to come. So... Basically, I kind of chalked it, switched to Call of Duty 4, grinded all year pubs, got pretty nasty, went to game battles at the end of COD 4, then switched to NW2, got on like some decent team to play the Pro Circuit Ladder online tournament. It was basically like a 5K. Um, got kind of a little bit known, a little bit like in the top amateur kind of league and uh, got pretty good. And then I went to local tournaments at NW2, uh, played with some kids that were actually pretty known and were really good at the time, and they picked me up. So... That's why I always tell you guys, you know, local tournaments and online tournaments can be really big when it comes to getting some recognition, as long as you're good, of course. And then basically at the end of MW2 and the start of Black Ops 1, 
you know, especially after I went to my first like tournament, like uh, to MOG Columbus, I was like consider a pro player. Stagely asks, just curious, anytime during your career, did you ever feel like quitting? Yes, there's been multiple times I felt like quitting. I've actually quitted, not because, I mean, I guess part of it was because I was kind of like doing bad. And at the same time, I was like a full-time college student. You know, I had Maria, my wife now. She was my girlfriend at the time. I wanted to spend more time with her. So I have quit before and I have felt like quitting before. But one thing that always comes back to me that makes me want to go again is one, I'm very passionate and I love competing and I love gaming. And two, what always really gets me going, and it's a, I guess it's a kind of a confidence thing, but I'm like, I'm, I'm too good to quit. That's always that lingers in my mind. Like if I if I quit now, I'm going to regret it because you when you know when you're, you know, you gifted or you're talented with something like you can't quit, bro. You can't quit on yourself, bro. You got to take what you have. You got to take what you've been given and go with it. So that's one thing that's always like kind of motivated me. Brandon asked, what is the most expensive thing you bought with your earnings for yourself? Now, I don't know if a house is considered uh, for yourself, but I have bought a house with my earnings. One of the best things and best investment I could do for myself. Honestly, it's a blessing that I'm able to do that. No, I didn't pay for the whole house. I have a mortgage, but you know, it's still technically my own house. And it's honestly an amazing thing. Other than that, I mean, I bought a car before. Um, I don't really buy too much crazy like jewelry or like, you know, designer stuff, like all those things. Like, I don't really like spending money on that type of stuff. You know, if anything, I, I buy my wife some things. But <laughs> mainly, like, that's probably the most expensive things. Nick asks, if you could drop into Verdansk with anyone in the world, so let me just athletes, which three people are you squatting up with? Wow, that's pretty hard. I'd probably say Kendrick Lamar. Uh, Easily my top two favorite artists, and it would be an honor to play with him. It actually probably be pretty funny. Uh, definitely LeBron James. The guy's just the king. He's a goat, man. It'd be honestly another one, just great to play with. It'd be pretty dope. And then low key, The Rock, bro. I honestly, I have always loved The Rock. The Rock's a cool dude, and I think it would just be funny to play with him, bro. Those three guys. Matthew C said, "What's your favorite part about streaming?" Now, streaming has been something I've enjoyed doing. I've been doing it on and off for about four or five years now. I think one of the best things about streaming is just that I love producing amazing gameplay for you guys. Like, I love going off. I love just like you guys are just, I love blowing you guys' minds. And on top of that, I just love spreading love and vibes. Like, I want you guys to come to my stream and just feel like happy. You know, I want you guys to feel vibey. Like, if you had a tough day, you know, if you had a bad day or you're going through something and you come to my stream and it like, it lifts your mood, like, I'm happy that I, I was able to do that, you know? And that's one thing that I've always loved about streaming you know, interacting with a lot of new people, interacting with all of you guys and people who support me and care about me. Like that makes me care about you guys because that that's an awesome thing, man. And I'm I'm happy like, you know, in sports you have like you sometimes you really just don't have that interaction. But I feel like when I stream, I get that with you guys. I get that like one on one or obviously like maybe it's not like literally one on one, but I really get to connect with you guys. Poop -a boo asked during either of your champ wins, was there a match or moment you knew you were winning at all besides the actual last minute of the grand final? Of course, Poo Boo. Um I think uh, for Black Ops 3 champs, when we won, I think when Optic lost to Cloud9, uh, when Optic got knocked out completely, I was like, this is it. Where we, I think at the time, we were like top six. We were winners. Optic got knocked out. We were feeling amazing, bro. We beat a lot of good teams, and Optic, which basically was our biggest threat, was out. And I was like, we won this. Like, Obviously, we weren't done yet. You know, I think in uh, winners' finals, it went like, uh, we went down 1-2, but we, brought, we won the next two. So... It was definitely a little scary at times, but that's for sure when it hit. And with EG, I don't think it ever felt like that with EG. But once we secured top three, after we, I think we reverse swept Envy in like winter finals. And TK was in losers and Rise already got knocked out. I think around then when we were like, we know we're already winners finals. Like we're, we're looking strong. Like all the good teams are out. I think around then it's like it kind of hit us. Not fully as it did when Optic got knocked out, but I was like low-key. Yo, we could win this thing. Exotic asked me, the GOAT, Lewis, Exotic, best, most rewarding content creation creation investment and why. I think I would have to go with a video editor for sure, especially if you're uh, very busy and you have a lot of content that needs to be edited and you just don't have the time to do it. I think it's an amazing thing if you can find a good editor because it just frees up your time, you know, whether you want to do something you enjoy and kind of free yourself or if you just have a lot of stuff on your plate. I think the next other two things is important is having a thumbnail creator. I think thumbnails are pretty damn important on YouTube. Obviously, you can kind of learn that yourself too. But, you know, I feel like you get kind of annoying having to make your own thumbnail every time. And it's just great. Another thing, you just freeze up your time. 
And I think a PC is really, really, really important when it comes to content creation. Joe asked me, as a player who has a family, would you be okay if the league did a bubble every event was land? Honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of a bubble just because, like, I always say this, bro. Like, as gamers, we're always inside. We're always in our apartment. We're always in our house. We're always in our chair. Like, if I had to stay, like, confined to a certain little space, like, I would lose my mind. Like, I want to be able to go to out to, like, a grocery store or go out somewhere like obviously i'm not saying i go out all the time but i don't know it just depends how big the space is knowing it's a call of duty league and not like something big like the nba who have that amount of money or willing to spend that amount of money and this would probably be a smaller bubble like i just don't think i'd really be happy about it at all now if it was let's say the last two months of the season you know and you get to play champs like 100 percent, and you get to play playoffs and like some tournaments on land okay then i'll deal with it but if it's like start of the season uh Hell no. The Bourgeois asked me, what is the one of the most difficult things you've experienced as a Call of Duty pro? Now, there's a lot of big things pros, um, you know, experience and that are difficult. I'm going to say two things, and they're both a little bit different in, in different aspects. But one thing, I think when you're Call of Duty pro, just like in a lot of, you know, leagues, pro leagues or anything, it's a grind. You have to put in a lot of time. You, you pretty much practice every single day. You know, holidays, I mean, you kind of take holidays off. But, like, other than that, like, almost every day, you play every day during the season. The next thing, other than that, is when you have a pro team and there's players on the team that don't maybe have the same mentality as you, don't have the same drive as you, um, you know, just aren't as dedicated or put in as much time as you, that is one of the most thing difficult things to experience because, you know, you have this mentality, I want to win, I want to be the best, I'm going to grind, I'm going to put in so much time. And then you have someone on your team doing the opposite or a lot less than you. And it kind of, it's just a difficult thing to work with because at the end of the day, you can't force anyone to play. You'd be like, hey, you should play tens. You should play eights. I've told, I've told teammates like that that don't play. I've told them to do that. I'm like, hey, you should play some tens. Ah, nah, I don't want to play. Or nah, I don't really feel like it. It's like, all right, well, like there's not much I can do. Like I can't go, I can't force them, you know? So that's like one of, a really difficult thing to work with and for the last question milton asked me this and I, you know you gotta save this one for last because it has slow in it <laughs> but you've often been described as a slow starter to a season but shows up at champs do you ha see any truth to that if yes how come i'm gonna be honest martin no for the most part and here's why first of all in the beginning of iw when i was on the nv team i was considered uh probably the best for like at least a couple, the first half of the year and then i slowed down a little bit but then again at the end of half uh, at the end, like a couple months, I was nasty at champs and whatnot. But again, in World War II, I was pretty good, pretty much. And then in, in Modern Warfare, I was pretty good. Black Ops 4 is like the only anomaly I can say, okay, I wasn't like that good at the start. But here's the problem. One, sometimes I dedicate too much time into my stream at the start of the game. And it kind of hinders me in terms of like the competitive side of things. Because one, I burn too much energy going to practice. Two, I'm kind of too, too focused on like streaming, you know, stream, stream, stream. Versus like, all right, how, like breaking down the game. How can I get better? I know it's still the start of the game, but I could be learning. I could get better. I can improve. So these are little things that kind of hurt me. And obviously I had, I've had this problem. I kid you not with almost every single team the past four years, except like maybe War War II was a little bit not like that. But the other three games, my team just did not care as much or really hated the game at the start. And that just hinders the team and that hinders me because I'm a person that cares a lot, very dedicated. But, you know, when you have players and teammates who just don't care as much as you or don't give the same effort or have the same drive as you, you know, it kind of kills your drive. And it's just it's a chain reaction, right? Like you can only go so hard and put so much effort for so long. Eventually, it's just going to go to you and you're going to be like, dude, if you're not going to care, then why should I, you know? All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video, man. It's been really fun answering a lot of these questions. I hope you guys got to learn a little bit more about me. And, you know, I hope I answered a lot of your questions, especially the people that asked me them. Uh, this has been a fun video. I haven't done a QA and a video like this, I kid you not, maybe in three, four years. But I felt like it was time to do something like this, especially so you guys get to know me a little bit more. Things have changed a bit. I am a dad now, and I am getting a little bit older. I do have gray hairs. Yes, this is real. You guys might think, oh, my God, he's old as hell. I'm not. I'm 26. I guess it's just jeans and maybe a little bit Call of Duty, you know, mixed in there has stressed me out a bit. But it is what it is, bro. I thank you so much for watching. If you watched till the end, I really appreciate that. And don't forget to drop that like. Guys, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'm out. Peace out, guys.